All right, everyone, so we are going to do a quick review of the Google BigQuery environment. So a couple of things to call out. Um, there is a whole process to establish a Google Cloud Space um, to create a project, set up billing, and all of this. So I, I've already done all of these steps in here. So my my console will look different than um, yours if you're going to be going to it and checking this out. Uh, you will not be able to create a billing account without a credit card, and so we don't we don't use BigQuery in this class, though you're exposed to it via Coursera, um, the adjacent Coursera content, but I just want to call that out. You can, however, create a Google um, Cloud instance, and I'm happy to provide some additional videos for folks in my class if there's interest on how to do that. But for, for this instance, we're simply going to utilize an existing space because that's most often, as an early an data analyst, going to be what you will be doing. So in the Cloud Console here, I've got my big query down here, um, you know, billing accounts, your IM and admin. This is where you create roles um, and set up different permission structures. APIs and services are things you've either developed or are pulling in. And then Google Cloud Storage is, is, you know, it's a data lake that can be used and leveraged then within BigQuery and many other services. Okay. So I'll click on BigQuery. I'll come up here. So you'll see I've got this CIS1280, which is of course, our, our course ID. Um, each project you create will have its own ID um, based on what it's it's used for. So for this instance, for this class, I've created this here. And then to talk about the interface a bit, what you see when you open it up. So over here on the left-hand side, the default will show you this pop-up. Um, you've got different options for analysis here. Okay, you can do all sorts of different things you, to scheduling queries, um, you know, to, to pushing data out, all, all sorts of things. Okay, and your big data, um, your big query studio is kind of a integrated space um, that's both, you know, code based and, you know, sort of point and click GUI based um, for use for data analytics. Okay, so I then have the explorer here. If I click on the down chevron, you'll see that anything I may have created um, for this particular class exists here. For example, if I had created and saved a query, which I have for this module eight demo, it would be right here. Um, I could have created notebooks, uh, which I've, I've done as well. Um, I can look at my external data connections, which are data feeds that I have pulled in. And then I can see here, uh, designated by these, this little square box with the dot, dot, dot tables, um, you know, data sets as well. So each data set can then have data or a data table associated with it. So multiple multiple tables can exist within a data set. Um, typically those are done in a way to have them interrelated uh, for a number of reasons to kind of structure that. Um, so for the purposes of this initial demo, we're going to look at the weather data. So the weather data is actually available to us here as a public connection. And then what we've done is just materialize it in BigQuery. So I'm going to show you that that process just to go through. Okay. So to import a data set, I would click here on add, and then I would get this pop-up. So you'll see I could do a local storage, like a CSV text file. I could leverage Google Cloud Storage, which is different than your drive folder, though you can also, of course, if you will look down here, leverage Google Drive uh, data in Google Drive. Uh, you can also create your own external you know, custom connections. You can connect to um, CRM platforms like Salesforce or HubSpot, uh, payment platforms like Stripe or customer service ones like Zendesk. Um, we have different data streams. For example, this is a live CDC replication um, data stream. You can connect to Microsoft Azure, which is um, the sort of Microsoft equivalence product um, stack to Google Cloud or for Amazon, which is Amazon Web Services. And then, of course, we have our S3 buckets, which is Amazon S3 buckets or data storage objects um, in Amazon. And so you can connect to those as well. Um, you'll see we have a, a number of them. OK, I'm not going to go through all of them right now. But what we will do is we will come back up here to the public data set. So these are prepackaged data sets that have been made available uh, to anybody who wants them. Uh, some of them are paid. Most of them are free. So we'll click on free and we'll just get a quick idea here. They have some category tags. 
Um, you know, these are designated really to, to help with science and research. So these are really data sets created to assist with machine learning and data analysis projects and also to integrate publicly available data, for example, census, into your existing cloud data environment to do some analysis, predictive analytics, things like this. Okay, so if I were to click on climate, you can see here I have all sorts of different things, uh, real-time meteorological and oceanographic products. I've got global forecast systems. So we'll just pull, we'll take a peek at this real quick. I'll click on it. And then what it'll do is it'll give me some data information. This is the data card. Okay, so I can read more about the data here. Okay, I can see, you know, how it's made available, seven-day rolling copy of real-time data. Uh, so it gets updated every day. You can only look back seven days in this particular data set. Okay, and then any additional details. I could click on sample, and then it's telling me to go here so I can then get a real-time understanding of what this data provides us. Okay, so it provides us a whole bunch of meteorological information. Here it looks like we've got everything from like wind, cloud coverage, you know, we'd have to spend some time reviewing the data that we're pulling in to understand what's in it. This is just the first time that, you know, we're looking at it here. Okay. Oops. We'll go back here. So that's kind of our data card information. We can click on related products and then see that there's some other, other information. Um, for example, the, I just clicked on this other one, which is a, this is provided by the Center for Disease Control. This is nationality uh, natility data for CDC births. So we can say we wanted to know how many people were being born. Okay. Let's see. You can look at maternal mortality, things like this to understand, you know, what parts of, this is a U.S. resident, so what parts of the United States have um, higher maternal mortality outcomes and look at that by different factors such as the county of residence, age, race, um, ethnicity. So there's all sorts of things you could do here. So I'll click on quickly view data set. It'll pop it up in a new tab for me. Now at this point, it hasn't actually imported it fully to my Google Cloud space. So it is We'll scroll to the top here. What it's done is it's created a temporary connection to this data. So when I leave the console and come back, because when we first got here, we just had the CIS option, this would no longer be our, I would have to go through the process again. I can add it as a data set to, you know, keep it here for, for whatever time I want, or I could write it to a new table, uh, like we have in some of the other examples we'll look at here in a minute. But just keep in mind that if you're, you know, you're using this external data, each time you come in, you'll have to like reconnect to it.